it is Monday. Welcome to a brand new week with Irish Breakdown. He's Vince D'Addario. I'm Sean Styers. March Madness is here. Man, we've got uh, plenty of basketball to talk about on today's show. As the show goes along, I mean, we've got plenty of other topics to talk about as well. Notre Dame football got a commitment yeah, today. Totally missed uh, that. Justin Fields has been traded. Um, what else? We've got to, we've got some soccer news today regarding Who Notre knew? Dame. That's very inter- well, interesting. To what degree you find it interesting, I guess, is uh, a different question. How are you today, Vince, as we start this week? I'm great. This is going to be the beginning of a, a bit of a crazy week, and uh, which I'm he- all here for. You know, I love you know all the basketball that we get to watch, and you know the yep. bracket madness, and whatever else you want to call it. And uh, we're gonna have some fun with it, and we're gonna we're gonna bring you the listener along with us because that's <laughs> what we do. So I don't know about you, but I had you know like I watched the men's selection show last night. Okay. Just to kind of see where everyone was going to be and just kind of hear what they had to say about them. Obviously, I wanted to see where Kansas was going to end up. I knew they weren't going to be in a great spot because they've really struggled for the last month or so with a couple of guys injured. But I really just kind of had uh, probably the least amount of interest in the men's selection show as I've had in a long time. We knew that Notre Dame wasn't going to be involved. It was just kind of blah to me. I don't know about you. No, I didn't watch a single second of it. And maybe that makes me not a very good sports fan, but I ended up uh, watching Survivor with my daughter. Like, I enjoyed that more than I was going to enjoy watching the selection show. Like, I I guess, obviously, I didn't have a dog in the fight because I do follow Notre Dame basketball. And and eventually, that will be the case where be watching to see where Notre Dame is going to end up or whatever. And then I lost track of time and it was eight ten, and boom, the women got announced. But like, I had no, I had no interest in the men's. Like I had no interest in it. And that's, I shot a text to you this morning. I was like, are we doing the bracket thing? Cause like <laughs> normally I've got some printed out. Like I've already filled a couple out, like getting after it. And I just, I don't know, man, it just didn't, uh, it didn't hit this year for me. I don't know. Yep. Brandon says he's watched more women's basketball than men's this year. He says that is a first for him. I think a lot of people are in that boat. I mean, you have got, and we kind of talked about this in a roundabout way, I think a week or so ago, was it last week or maybe the end of the week before in regards to interest in the men's tournament and the fact that there are not big stars in the men's game. We're obviously, Caitlin Clark is the biggest star in the women's game, but you have players like, you know, Angel Reese and, you know, I don't know if Carmilla Cardoso, the big South Carolina player, is a star, but you know, she, she got thrown out of that LSU game in the SEC championship game. But you got rising stars like Hannah Hidalgo here at Notre Dame, Juju Watkins out at USC. USC got a number one seed, you know, in the women's game. Notre Dame, as we're going to talk about here in a second, got a number two seed. So I think that there are a lot more sort of faces that you recognize in the women's game. And I think it's, yeah, uh, I sure. think, I think the quality of play has continued to grow on the women's side. Whereas because of one and do, probably starting with one and done and continuing with all the roster movement that you get with the transfer portal, I think the men's, the quality of the men's game has really suffered over the last few years. Oh, I, I think I it's affected interest. Yeah, I agree with that. I look, I, I, I don't have a lot of interest in the men's tournament, but I want to make it clear that I did have a lot Blast of for me. I, I know <laughs> I did have a lot of interest in the Notre Dame men's team though. Sure. Like I didn't, I didn't watch one over the other men's and women's. I kind of watched them both equally. I would say, because I think the men's team is still fun to watch. Now they didn't win as many games, obviously as the women this year, but I still think that they're a fun team to watch. So I have definitely at times, at times. fair enough. When but the ball's going in the hole, or at least it's a close game, you know, it's like well, you can still those appreciate times when the ball is playing not, defense. You, know, you can yeah. at least appreciate the defense and the sure. hustle sure. and that kind of stuff. I, there were times in towards the end of Mike Bray's, no, well, I couldn't watch the men's games. Period. Like yeah. I could not watch them play at all. And uh, but obviously having a connection to you, sir. 
uh, makes me want to watch the women's games a little bit more. And they're fun to watch. I mean, they're obviously really good. Mm -hmm. They, you know, you, sometimes you never know which women's team you're going to get. Uh, but the one that they've gotten here recently has been hey. fantastic. So yeah. a lot of fun. Say, the one they've got for the last eight games has yep. worked out pretty well. Absolutely. <laughs> 100%. Even though, we'll, we'll start with the bad news and we'll work from there. Kylie Watson officially announced and Neil Ivey confirmed it after the selection yesterday that Kylie Watson is out with an ACL. So that that is a factor. You know, they did announce it going into the tournament, unlike last year where you had a, a player like Olivia Miles and they kind of you know toyed around with it. I guess... They did announce it after the the selections, anyway. Yes, like Kylie Watson was yeah. going to be out, which which obviously makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I think we all kind of figured that was going to be the case, but the official announcement—I mean, she put it out on, I believe, her Instagram, and then mm -hmm. uh, they were able. And I'm pretty sure she and she personally announced it right on her Instagram after the selection she was did. made, right? And so uh, then they did a little media scrum with Niel, and she uh, confirmed it. So. Uh, but yeah, it's a big loss for Notre Dame. I mean, there's no no two ways about it. I mean, plenty of people can complain about her lack of offensive output, but the last seven games or so that she played in, not only was her defense absolutely stellar, but there were some times where her offense was pretty stinking good too. Yeah, uh, she had a couple nice moves, and and that was a shit. You know, the game that yeah. she got hurt, she was kind of getting on a little yeah. bit of a roll offensively in that game. She ended up with eight points in that game, right? You know, so obviously you never want to see anyone get hurt. It it Stinks even more when you've got a starter who goes out right before tournament yeah. time and all that kind of stuff. And you Tough know the uh, the question Sean Kelly had who's good Kelly has who's going to replace Watson? He says you huge loss. This poor team has just been plagued by injuries. And I mean it is a laundry list of injuries, unfortunately. But uh, you know Nat Marshall is going to have to step up. She'll she'll step into yeah. the lineup. I would imagine. You know, unless Neil Ivy sees a matchup and maybe wants to start off a little bit smaller and go with KK Bransford, four guards basically, and then have Maddie Westbeld, you know, kind of be the big. Maddie is obviously very versatile. And, you know, the thing with that Marshall as well is she doesn't necessarily have that that low post move just in terms of her offense. She can she can play some solid defense from, you know. She's in, long in, in yeah, spurts as long. well. Yeah, she's obviously, you know, long, not quite as physical as Kylie, but she's going to be called upon. And look, Becky Obinma has not played a whole lot this year, but this is potentially a real opportunity for her to step up and sort of, you know, show her value to this yeah. team because we, we were talking about it before. They got her to be a defensive presence. She was a big shot blocker when she was out West at, at Pepperdine. She blocked at like 70 shots, I think in her last two seasons, you know, a little over 70 shots in her last two seasons at Pepperdine. So this is potentially an opportunity for her as well. You know, especially yep. if, because you are going to be a little bit thinner in the roster, there's going to be a time. If you're going to make a run of the tournament, there's going to be a time where both of those players are going to have to mm -hmm. step up. So. Yeah, for sure. And they're, you know, and, and you know, the big three, they're going to have to be big in every game. You know what I mean? Uh, there's not going to be a lot of margin for error, you know, maybe in game one, but, you know, moving forward, it's not going to be a lot of margin for error. So, uh, look, this is a well coached team. They aren't super deep, but at the same time, Sean Styers, you have said this before, and I will give you the platform to say it again. Okay. They have made runs with a very short bench in the past. Yes. So won a national champion, won their last national championship with six players in right. 2018. Now in 2001, Muffet McGraw had a deeper bench, but essentially she shortened the bench once it came, you know, tournament time. And for the most part, she, you know, they won the, the national, you know, like some of the bench players played more in the early rounds, you know, as they were beating sure. the snot out of people and that kind of stuff. But the deeper they went and the tougher the competition went, it was basically six players as well yeah. that they that they won that thing with. So right. it's not it can be done. It's not unprecedented. It can yeah. be done. That's it exactly, can be done. Exactly right. That's exactly right. Decaf wants to know what the deal with Prosper is, what her injury is. I think officially it's a lower leg injury, and it is just not healed, you know, the way 
it needs to heal for her to get back out there on the floor. We'll just have to leave it with that. Yep. You know, you can only give what they've given us. Right. <laughs> well, yes, yes. And you know, like the Kylie Watson, you know, look, I said last week when someone asked about it that there's only so much that I'm allowed to say. Right. You know, there are things that I find out sort of in advance, but I have to mm -hmm. keep it zipped because I'm privy to that information and can't give it out until they decide that it's time for it to be announced, you know. So it's just it's the way it goes. Yep. Now the good news. They're a two seed. Yeah. <laughs> and they're gonna host. Right. You know, we kind of we kind of figured we knew that they were going to host. You know, we pretty much knew that they were going to host. The biggest question was what seed were they going to be? Were they going to be, could they climb as high as a two? Because on February 29th, the NCAA released its final top 16 seeds, uh, you know, final pre-tournament or before last night anyway, um, the top 16 seeds. And Notre Dame was not in the top 16. Nope. So they went from, not in the top 16 a little bit more than two weeks ago to essentially top eight by virtue of being a number two seed during this stretch of, uh, you know, winning the winning streak that they're on right now. They're going to play 15 seed Kent State Saturday, 215. The other two teams in the South Bend pod are number seven seed Ole Miss, number 10 seed Marquette. Those two teams are going to play around 445 Saturday afternoon. So the two seed Vince, what did you think when you saw the two seed pop up there on the screen last night? I've got to say I was a little shocked. I think I texted you as soon as I saw it. I was like, a two seed? I, I was a little surprised. I knew it was a possibility, and they've been playing. They're hot, obviously. They've been playing very, very well. I thought they might take the Kylie Watson injury into account a little bit, and maybe they'd be a high three seed as opposed to probably the, the last two seed. I had no thoughts that they weren't going to be able to host i you know i figured that would be the case obviously but uh very surprised to me that they became a two i and i'm sorry but like watching the the looks on their faces as well in the video they looked a little surprised to be a two as well uh, yeah they were you know they, like <laughs> i think neil was holding up the twos you know the yeah. deuces with their with their fingers afterward i think that they were very yeah happy by that you know and we'll talk about the bracket you know, the, the region that they happen to be in, but uh, I was a little bit surprised myself. Like when I saw Oregon state announced as the three, I'm thinking, well, okay, probably not going to be in this region. And then the next thing, you know, like 30 seconds later, boom, there it is. Notre Dame is the number mm -hmm. two seat in the, in the very first region that they went through the uh, Albany one region on to, you know, as they started the show last night. Which, I mean, look, that, that, that's a great, great accomplishment. If that's where everything ends is that they became a two seed, what they've accomplished in the last three weeks is, I mean, unprecedented. With the the amount of ranked teams that they beat and then obviously winning the uh, the ACC championship, I don't, I don't care that the one girl was out. I, they still won it. They still had to win all of those games. Well, remember, you know, they, beat, they beat Virginia Tech with her as well. That's true. So. That, no, that's absolutely true. And so, so I, you know, like just for yeah. anyone who wants to use that uh, against them, they beat them with her, they beat them without her. And they, it's true. they beat them. They, they didn't just beat them without her. They handed Virginia Tech the worst ever loss by a number one seed in ACC tournament history in that case. Oh, fantastic. So, I know. Yeah. I mean, no, like I said, what they've done over the last three weeks has been unprecedented. They deserved the number two because of that. Right. I mean, it's all about what you're doing in March. Well, their March so far has been pretty stinking solid. So uh, I, I'm very excited for them, very happy for them. They were able to get the two seed. I think it's awesome. I, I think it's absolutely awesome. Yeah, DK says putting them in with South Carolina, does that mean they're the lowest ranked two seed? Yes, basically. Yeah. Like South Carolina is the overall number one. So Notre Dame then as the number two in that is the lowest rank. So but that basically means they're number eight, you know, yeah, again. Right. They were not even top 16 two weeks ago. So that's, you know, as much as it kind of stinks to end up being in South Carolina's bracket, no one wants to be in South Carolina's sure. bracket. But we can kind of talk about this first. Then, you know, somebody was talking about it on the boards today. 
I still like, okay, when you look at the other regions, I like the number, I like having Oregon State as the number three that you potentially have to beat in the Sweet 16, as opposed to either UConn, LSU, or having to beat North Carolina State again, just because, you know, like they, they sure. just beat North Carolina State, obviously, but they've also lost to North Carolina State. And when you look at the fact that there would be like the last two years, they lost in the Sweet 16 to a repeat opponent. Two years ago, they lost to, or yeah, two years ago, they lost to NC State in a repeat game because they obviously played them in the regular season because they're in the same conference. Last year, they lost to Maryland in a repeat game. So you're not going to get a repeat game if you're Notre Dame until the Elite Eight now, so that at least, you know, you. Maybe you go a little bit farther, maybe you don't. But it's either going to be South Carolina or, you know, like if North Carolina would happen to upset South Carolina in the second round, that's the only chance at a repeat is all the way out to the Elite Eight. So I like that. And I just, you know, again, Oregon State's a three seed, so they're going to be a solid team as well. But when you look at who those other three number three seeds are, I would still rather have Oregon State as my three seed that I have to go through to try to get to the Elite Eight than one of those other teams. So, yeah, you know, again, nobody wants to have South Carolina, but those other teams are pretty good as well. You know, would you rather have South Carolina? Would you rather have Iowa, Texas, and USC or a little bit of an unknown commodity in comparison? But I think it's really with the exception of South Carolina, I think it's a pretty favorable bracket for Notre Dame. I, no, I, I agree, and and uh, I feel really good about them getting to the Elite Eight. I feel really good about that. Yeah. And then, look, then you got an opportunity to go up against South Carolina. South Carolina obviously is going to be the favorite in that game, and we can, you know, talk about that when it, when the, when the time comes after watching South Carolina play some games in this tournament, watching Notre Dame play some games in this tournament. But the bottom line is, I like their path. Now, nothing is going to be laid out perfectly for them to get to the Final Four. I get that, right? Uh, but I like their path to get to the Elite Eight. I really do. And so I, I'm excited to watch this team play. Yeah. And look, anything can happen in the tournament. I, well, and that's what I was going to say. Even though they got smoked by South Carolina, obviously, in that game in Paris to open one. the season, South Carolina's played some closer games here down the stretch. Right. You know? So, hey. It's tournament time. Anything right. can happen. With a chance to go to the Final Four, I mean, yeah. not, the stakes are so much higher. Like, the game, the game over in Paris felt a little exhibitionist. You know what I mean? Like an exhibition game. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe exhibitionist isn't the right word uh, to be using there. Uh, but it felt like exhibition-y. an exhibition. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> it felt like a, like that kind of a game. Like almost like a, like, hey, man, we're in Paris. I guess we'll play a basketball game. Like, it, you know what I mean? And right. So I'm not saying that Notre Dame wasn't ready to play it, but th- the stakes are going to be completely different if they meet in the Elite Eight. I mean, completely different. So, I, look, I like Notre Dame stepping up to the challenge. I, I think they've got some savvy players. I think they've got, obviously, excellent guard play. And so I give Notre Dame a shot. Well, look, Hannah Hidalgo's a different player now. Like Even, even though Absolutely. she scored over 30 points in that first game, she is a much more complete player yes. now than she was in that game. And the offense in general is just – and the defense – as well, you know right. the the biggest question you're going to have in that game, if it comes to it, and they're still they still have to win three games to get there first. But if we're going to talk about South Carolina and a potential matchup, and the biggest question is going to be, how do they contend with Carmela Cardoso? Their, sure. you know, their monster inside that that's going to be the biggest question, and it doesn't help now that you don't have Kylie Watson. But again, right. you know, once Nat Marshall and and Obinma. And Westbelt you know, have some chances to, you know, to sort of play without Kylie Watson. They could look like a different team by the got the by the time they get there. And Maddie Westbelt had just as much, you know, if not more, you know, she and, and Kylie Watson, the way she, you know, the way they played defense against Elizabeth Kitley, Virginia Tech's big that we were talking about a second ago. They, they've shown that they can do it. Now, again, Cardoso's a little bit, you know. It's a little bit different player, a little bit more physical than Kitley, but still, it's it, it's a matter of you know, can you put the game plan together? Sure. Can you execute yep. a game plan? And 
I think it, I think it could just be a lot different looking game if Look, they get I, the opportunity again. I, and I like what the assistant coaches have been able to do with these game plans against these high ranked teams as a, you know, in the month of March, frankly. And so look, the team has grown. I think the staff has grown all of it. Right. And look, South Carolina has grown too. Th- these are going to be two completely different teams than when they faced off the first time, yeah. you know, all the way back in, what was that? October. I mean, that was a or November, whatever Practically it was. October, but it was November. Like, it was early November. Yeah. Yeah. It was a long, I mean, that was a long time ago. So look, I I'm, I'm pumped for Notre Dame. I think they got an awesome seed. I, they can't be more excited than they are right now. And they got a week to sit on it, which is kind of crazy. So they don't even play until Saturday. I know. Um, that's I know. nuts. That's they nuts tweaked, all by itself. They tweaked the the format again this year, starting <laughs> yeah, just with the way. Yeah. So it's just like they're they're always sort of tinkering with yeah. when, you know, with the women play versus when the men play. And yeah. So Notre Dame's not gonna play their first game until Saturday. Now, Tommy asks if any of Notre Dame's injuries could extend into next year. Yes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I mean, well, look, Kylie Watson just tore her ACL. Right. Right. I mean, that will extend into next year. And that's not exactly uh, giving away any state secrets. That's just medicine. You know, I mean, yep. it, it, it's a at least an eight month situation, if not more. Right. And that puts you right at the beginning of the season. So. Uh, I'm sure hers will go into the next into next season if she come if she decides to come back, which of course we don't even know if that's going to happen. So a lot of stuff to figure out. DK is very happy. Apparently, He's, he tells Brent Smith, who just got here, nothing to see here. Jesse isn't here. And we're talking women's basketball because Brent loves to go back and forth with Jesse about Cowboys and 49ers. So uh, yes, we we know this. I wanted to mention the Marquette connections. To Notre Dame. This is nuts. I did, I had no idea until I read the notes. So yes, a ton of Marquette connections, starting with the head coach Megan Duffy, who was a point guard for Muffet McGraw back in the early two yeah. thousands. I remember 2002 that. Two to two thousand six. That's right. She's uh, from the uh, the Dayton, Ohio era area, and I think it was two thousand three. They uh, went to the Sweet Sixteen in Dayton. Played uh, UConn out there if I if my memory serves but anyway Megan the point guard and then so Megan Duffy begins a coaching career uh, post leaving Notre Dame she becomes a head coach at Miami Ohio and Michaela Mabry who is a Notre Dame alum of course herself joins Megan Duffy's staff uh, when when Duffy her first head coaching job at Miami Ohio And um, so she works for Duffy for two years there before she goes on and becomes a recruiting coordinator at LSU. And of course, Mabry is now back on the Notre Dame staff. She has been on staff here at Notre Dame since 2019. But also on Megan Duffy's Marquette coaching staff is one Jonathan Sippus, who was an assistant for McGraw. That's right. He was an assistant for McGraw from 2003 through 2012 on the staff when Megan Duffy was playing here at Notre Dame. But uh, Sippus was also at Notre Dame in two, in 2011 and 2012 when that run of Final Fours, the kind of the mm-hmm. you know the the big long successful run. They were national runners up in 11 and 12. He was on those staffs. He uh, left Notre Dame after 2012, becomes the head coach at George Washington. He uh, led them to the NCAA tournament his last couple of years there, took over at Wisconsin. He was there for five years, and for the last two years, Jonathan Sippus has been on Megan Duffy's staff at Marquette uh, after leaving Wisconsin. Really good, really good guy. And actually, when I'm trying to think of which event, it was when they did the Muffet McGraw banner, not this, was it last season? It was either the last season or the season before. Yeah, when they did the uh, the Ring of Honor, you know, banner yeah. for Muffet up in the in the rafters at Purcell, uh, Jonathan Sippus and his family came back for that, and they were like sitting right behind me, you know, got a chance to talk to him for a little bit. You know, again, really, really a uh, good guy who was a part of Muffet's staff for nine years before he became a head coach. And then there's also Marquette athletic director Bill Scholl, who's another great guy. He was at Notre Dame in different administrative capacities. For 23 years, he's a hometown guy, graduated from Notre Dame 
He was assistant AD, associate AD, deputy AD in his last few years at Notre Dame before he became the athletic director at Ball State and then moved on to Marquette. But uh, Bill, you know, worked with Notre Dame baseball for several years, and he was the uh, assistant athletic director assigned to baseball when Paul Maneri took the program to the College World Series in 2002. So how about that for some Notre Dame connections coming back with Marquette here this week? Man, I, I mean, I, look, I, I know Marquette has always been a traditional rival of Notre Dame and all of these different things, especially in basketball, especially when they used to be in the same conference and you know, all of those different things, but I had no idea about, first of all, I didn't know Megan Duffy was in coaching. I guess that shows you how much I follow <laughs> women's basketball. But I remember when she was playing because she was playing while I was a student. And so I remember That's her right. playing. That's and, right. Uh, you know, that was when I was also break, you know, her, so that was the first part of her career. And then the second part of her career was when I was breaking into doing stuff with you mm -hmm. and you were, you know, still calling games and doing all that. So, right. Yeah, so it was uh, that that it's just like a blast from the past uh, when I saw that name written down. So that was kind of exciting. So uh, just adds a little something something to watching watching the uh, the games this weekend. I'm excited about that. Yep. So Marquette plays Ole Miss again. They've got the second game Saturday. Notre Dame and Kent State in the first game at two fifteen Saturday. The winners will advance and play on Monday, a week from today, and then the winners of those yeah. game games, of course, advance on. To the sweet 16. So are they going to you may even not have made the answer to this? Are they going to clear the stadium like in between games? Or if you buy a ticket to the first game, you can stick around for game two? I was wondering that myself. I don't okay. know exactly how that's going to work. I can uh I can ask around and kind of find that I, out if it's really important. <laughs> I, I well, it's not. My, my father in law has tickets because he's a season okay. ticket holder, and so he got okay. tickets. I'm just curious as to if you know it's gonna be an all-day affair. Or if it's just like one game and you got to get out, you know, that kind of thing. I mean, personally, I wonder I think if they should be able to stay. But. Right. Have him look on the ticket. I know my All wife, right. I think, was supposed to get her tickets. She's got tickets. Uh, they're e-tickets. Yeah. I don't know if they've come they in her email yet, but I'll have to. Maybe if, if they come, I'll, I'll have get to. The, see, you don't away. ever have to worry about the tickets, but it's on the old Fighting Irish app now. And, okay. Uh, that it's it actually it's very user friendly. Uh, you can swap tickets back and forth and right all that stuff. Okay. I'm not sure. I'll see if I can find that out though. That is a good question. I'm not. Yeah, I'm just. Not I just sure. texted them. We'll see what happens. Okay. But I I think they would be silly to clear out the stadium and then or you know the arena and then try to get people to come back or, or whatever. Like you want as many people any as many butts in the seats as possible, right? I mean that's. At least that's how I would think that it would go. But I agree. It's I nice agree. to have Marquette. I will say that Marquette travels pretty well. I've been to some Notre Dame Marquette games in the past. Not too far away. That's right. Yeah, they tend to travel pretty well, and so you you know you'll get kind of some lo obviously local flavor with Notre Dame, and then you can get a well traveled Marquette team. And if they both win, I mean yep. that could be uh, that could be a really good crowd actually on Monday. Really, one of Notre Dame's better. You know, both men and women rivals back yeah. when they were both in the Big East. Absolutely, together. absolutely. Joe Allen buying the Miami Ohio football tickets. Boom. Off yeah, the I app. saw. I think they had they had like a a sale over the weekend. They were selling tickets for fifty bucks or something. Yeah, like that for that. I did game. see that. I did see that. Nice. So nice. Chuck Martin coming back to Notre Dame. That's true. That's true. I forgot about that. They're the, the reigning Mac champs. Andre Inspired. wants to know if, if Irish Breakdown is doing a bracket oh. challenge. Mm. Funny you should ask that, Andre. So what's the status, Vince? What's what's going on with, with what we got going on with that? Well, the men's bracket is is open and ready to roll. So we, we created a group on ESPN, and I know people are going to have their issues with ESPN, and I don't care. Uh, that's what we decided to use. It was the easiest one to, to generate a group. And so we did, we did a group for Ivy nation sports talk. And so if you go on, uh, to ESPN and you, you go to groups, you got to sign in, you know, the whole thing, but if you go to groups and you search Ivy nation sports talk, it's IB new word nation, new word sports, new word talk. Okay. And then you can join the group and the password the password is Irish Breakdown. Irish so you Breakdown. can 
Yes, all one word, Irish breakdown. I can't remember, uh, honestly, if I use... Share that uh, password, if you will. Yeah, I can't remember if I used capital I and capital B. I think I did, oh boy. but it's but it's all one. I know it's gonna you, get complicated. You guys will now. figure it out. Just a couple of chances, and you'll you guys will get okay. it figured out. So IB Nation Sports Talk is the group. Yes. Irish breakdown is the password. Correct. Okay. You guys can jump in. Are we gonna do one for the women? I haven't created it yet, but we, we can. can if you want. I guess it depends on who wants to. I haven't filled out either. I started to fill out my men's, and then I'm okay. like, you know what? I want to look at you know if I'm kind of. Basically, there's no money on the line. There's no prizes on no, the line. You know, fun. like maybe if you want, you can meet Vince. You know, like if you win the whole thing. <laughs> I don't or know if that's a prize. <laughs> that might be the booby prize. Like if you come in last. That's right. <laughs> uh, Tommy Guns, he just joined. It's capital I, capital B, all one okay. word. Irish breakdown. So Good there job. you go. So uh, join in, man. Let's have some fun with this thing. We can kind of see where Jeez. we. I mean, Tommy, Tommy is so sensitive when I don't use his questions. It's like yeah, sometimes, sometimes Tommy, people start firing off a bunch of stuff at the same time and I can't see everything. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, so I yeah, also, join you in. know, I have to make eye contact with Vince once in a while and I have to, you know, let him know I'm here. I'm mean, paying attention to what he's saying right here. <laughs> Got to keep it, keep it real. That's right. But yeah, so everybody join so in. We'll... It for fun, you know. If, yeah. So if you want to just join in, whatever, and you know, maybe if you know, we can come up with some other prize. You know, maybe we can talk Brian into giving us a hat or a T-shirt or something for the there winner or something like that. You know, there you so. Go. DK says the prize is you get to come to my house and babysit my kids. And I get to take That's my wife right. out. That's a win right there, folks. That is a win. No, you get to come to Vince's house. And let his wife tell you about her dreams, and <laughs> oh, 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 oh. you get me in trouble. Uh oh, you're gonna, do. You're gonna so, get me in trouble. Did anything? Did anything happen last week when your kids, you know, were wasn't, spilling the beans about the dream stories and all? Yeah, it that wasn't stuff. great. It wasn't great for me. Um, <laughs> but we, I think we've gotten past it. All right, I'm glad you made it. I, I didn't even try, and I got you in trouble. <laughs> I know that one. Oh, because I, I do a great like, job. All it was on my just own. part of the question. Yes, and. I do a great job all on my own. Don't worry. That's right. Don't worry. <laughs> you know this. All on my own. But uh, so, yeah. Tommy was having a big dilemma, by the way. Extremely important question. What he should pull out of the fridge for dinner tonight? Steak or chicky wings? I would go with the steak. Honestly. I mean. Had a little bit too much chicken over the weekend, personally. So Did you? Yeah. My wife's upstairs making chicken right now. So uh, I'm very excited about it. Nice chicken meal. But yeah, I would go with the steak as well. I I don't know. I I don't feel like I make good chicken wings at home. You know what I mean? And so those are more of the going out style. If do you I have an air fryer? Steak, I do not. If you try the air fryer, you'll that, be amazed at how well you can make things like wings. It's that like that, those air fryers, man. Very simple. Uh, even if you even if you don't, they're easy to broil as well. Okay. Like I do a thing where like I get, you know, like the, the broiler pan. Yeah. 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 And I'll, and I'll put them on like low broil, like, uh, like four or five minutes aside. Mm. And then I'll kick the broiler up and I'll move the wings down a little bit and put them on for about three or four minutes aside and get them nice and crisp. That sounds complicated. And, uh, well, I mean, you got to pay attention. Yeah, see, that's... that's why that's why I asked about the air fryer. You don't have to pay yeah. nearly as much attention with the air that's fryer. True. I've wanted an air fryer for a while, uh, but it has not occurred. It has not gone down. I see it every time I go to Costco. I'm like that. I want one of those. You can do a lot of things with the air fryer. That's what I've heard. I've been very impressed. Very I, that's impressed. what I've heard. It's kind of a, the jack of all trades in your kitchen. We've a, a couple of different times. We've got just like the turkey breast. You know, not like the full turkey, but just the breast, which is a little bit smaller. And you can cook a turkey breast in like 40-ish minutes or 45 minutes, maybe. Really? Comes out very tasty. Mm, if you're a fan of the bird. Good. I'm yeah. a fan of the bird because the bird is the word. <laughs> Anthony says, Duquesne Dukes make the NCAA tournament for the first time in 47 years. Notre Dame wins the national championship for the first time in 35. Okay. Positive Mark thinking. Mark Positive. it down. Mark it down. Old army buddy of mine, Sam. I can't say his last name because he joined the FBI after he got out of the army. But 
Good for he him. was a Duquesne, played football at Duquesne. Really? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, I think did Brian, Brian coached at Duquesne, I think, right? I think you're actually correct. I believe yeah, he did. One of his one of his coaching stops, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. I believe you're yeah. accurate on that. In the city of Pittsburgh. Go Dukes. Huh. Okay. Didn't realize that either. I didn't realize where I didn't know I had no <laughs> idea where they were from. Now, now I know. you know. I now mean I know. it's Duquesne, man. There hasn't been much of a reason to know anything about that. I mean, the only reason I know about Duquesne is because of that guy, because we were like, you know, we started off, I think we were together for the better part of three and a half years or something okay. like that, like between, yeah. you know, a couple different places. So yep. Makes sense. All right, Vince, are you ready for rapid fire? Let's go. It's a Monday version. I'm ready. All right. I had some go. other. I, I had some other basketball stuff. I think I'll just save it for tomorrow because we've okay. got you know like ton of different stuff that we can different directions we can oh, go yeah. with hoops this week. Oh yeah, that's so. a good point. I was gonna say I, I thought there was some more stuff we were gonna talk about, but that's okay. That is okay. We got plenty of time. Plenty because I'm with you again tomorrow. So. <laughs> Sam Spade, DK says, are you, did you watch uh, Monsieur Spade on AMC by any chance, DK? Clive Owen? Spade. Solid series. Solid okay. series. Fill in the blank. Jordan Faison's brother, Dylan Faison, becoming Notre Dame's first commitment for the 2026 recruiting class today is blank. Proof that the pot of gold works. I mean, uh, you know, they just went out yesterday and he's already uh, he's already committing today. That's pretty amazing uh, that a kid who is in his sophomore year of college or high school is committing and figuring out where he wants to go to college. But they, uh, look, obviously, they knew the family already because they got Jordan on the team. So that's always the thing with like the little brothers. They already know the family. And so there's a little less research that has to go into it. And so... I think it's awesome. I think it's fantastic. I haven't obviously had a chance to watch any of his film or anything like that. I didn't even know that he committed until you told me. Uh, and so, because I know it wasn't that I'm always glad ago. to break news to you. Man. You really so do. I can break a, news on this show. On a regular basis, you break news to me. Uh, usually, I read through the, the notes that you send me, and you sent me that one, and I was like, holy You're crap. like, huh, that happened. That's crazy. <laughs> Uh, but his profile picture on his Twitter account, by the way, is him playing lacrosse. Right. And so he's right. obviously probably going to do double duty just like his brother. And, hey, it works out so far. So why not double dip into there? He sounds like a, a clone of Jordan. And we've already seen what Jordan can do. And I'm sure that that what Jordan did in his first season here at Notre Dame between football and lacrosse had an impact on them yeah. going in a little bit earlier on Dylan Faison. And I mean, looks almost like a clone. He's like 5'11, yeah. 175 pounds or something like that. And he is another really good lacrosse player. And apparently, as you alluded to, the plan is for him, just like Jordan, to do both. And there you go. Tommy says he's the number one lacrosse player in his class. And it's like, man, you know, one. You know, Marcus Freeman obviously has a lockdown on the Faison family, which yeah. is great. I know, right? But, but at the same time, uh, Kevin Corrigan has done a pretty good job of locking down the Faisons himself, Yeah, it seems like. So it's a coup for both, I think, to, to be able to get another Faison in here. He is just a sophomore, but he is the first commit of the 26th class. So he's he's a few years away by the time he gets here. But, uh, you know, again, just, just based on what we've seen, from Jordan, it sounds like Dylan is going to be more of the same. And who knows, within three years, he might even be even more because he's already pretty darn good. Yeah, I, I didn't uh, – before – about 24 hours ago, I didn't even know that there was a little Faison brother. and But he was obviously involved <laughs> in the in the pot of gold, uh, which means he was offered a scholarship for football. And, and there you have it. So, uh, again – it's a little easier when it's a little brother because you already know the family and you kind of already know what you're getting yourself into. Uh, but that's still pretty stinking exciting, uh, I'm sure, for the family. And why not, as a parent, you know, you've got going to have your kids playing on the same team, on both teams, playing together, which is awesome. I mean, that that that's actually really, really cool. So I'm sure the parents are excited. And, uh, and young Dylan, already knowing his college path, and he's not even done with his sophomore year. So that's pretty cool, too. Absolutely. DK was... 
he brought up Sam Spade a second ago. Have you ever seen the Maltese Falcon by any chance? Negative. I have not either. I believe Humphrey Bogart, if I'm not mistaken. So this Monsieur Spade on AMC, the series I was talking about a second ago, Clive Owen plays the lead character. It picks up apparently after the Maltese Falcon uh, you know, the movie from a long time ago ends. And so it's like the same character living in, in the South of France and adventures and, you know, all this different kind of stuff. He's, he was like a private investigator. Who's an American who ends up over like, I didn't see the Maltese Falcon. So I didn't know a lot of the backstory, but, Fair enough. I enjoyed this. Uh, I enjoyed the series. I won't. I won't ruin. Okay, DK. It's going to be very specific. It was also a movie. He says it was a movie. <laughs> Mr. Literary over here. Oh, that's great, DK. But anyway, I would recommend. You know, if you like eight episodes, I think six, oh, six or eight. Digest so, that one pretty fast, I would think. Yeah, you know, kind of you know mystery, adventure, private investigator type stuff. I'd recommend it. Nice. Fill in the blank. Notre Dame announcing a soccer friendly today between Celtic and Chelsea that'll be played July 27th at Notre Dame Stadium is blank. Eh. It's eh. Like, it it didn't... Let's just say that it it didn't necessarily get me excited personally. And so, look, I I went to the one uh, that they had here was about five years ago now. Yes, it was. Uh, And it was... The it was Liverpool, like, right? Yes, Borussia it was like, or whatever it was. It yeah. was a it was a lot of fun. I took my son. We I snuck him into the press box. Ninety degrees, uh, boiling hot outside. It, it was very very hot, uh, but luckily we were able to get inside the press box, and so it wasn't quite as hot for some of us. Uh, but we had a, we had a great experience. I really enjoyed taking my son. It was really cool, uh, not weather wise, but it was really awesome. We went to the practice like the day before over on the soccer stadium. And then, of course, they had the game on, on I think it was a Saturday, whatever. Either way, uh, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. I just don't think that's something I would want to do again. Uh, I, I'm not a fan of either team. And so it doesn't really do anything for me. I wasn't a fan of either team last time, but my son loves soccer. And so we went. And so it's just not something I would want to do again. And so I will probably be the grumpy old man in the balcony this time around when all the traffic and everything happens in July and I'm trying to do my job on campus and this one gets in the way. And so, I mean, it's great for soccer fans. I'm sure they're all going to be excited. It's cool to watch something different in Notre Dame stadium. So that's neat, but it just doesn't really, doesn't float my boat. You took the, uh, eh, right out of my mouth. <laughs> I just... Well, you got especially like, <laughs> I feel bad for you, man. You, you went to a, a press conference, had no idea what the press conference was going to be, and it turned out to be a big soccer announcement. <laughs> yeah. Know? I so. mean, you got the rug pulled out from under you yes. pretty severely on this. <laughs> Folks, we got a, a, a very cryptic email that there was going to be a press conference. Right. And that that soon-to-be athletic director Pete Bavacqua would was be going in to be there. And that's that was, what the email that was kind of the gist. That was yes. the details of the email. There's going to be a Correct. press conference Monday. Pete Pavak was going to be there and he'll be one of the people speaking. Oh, okay. Right. You know, you want to hear yes. what Pete Pavak has to say. Right. Uh, unless it, maybe it has to do with soccer. Look, I'm just not into soccer. And <laughs> I went to the thing with you. You know, we, we yeah. actually had a booth there. And you remember yeah. I, did, I did I did my radio show there yep. from the press box that yep. night. You know, joyous whatever and like i said it was a cool not, event. I, I think i left by halftime i let you, you know did. i let you, you, <laughs> did. Let you it just i was not into it especially staring into the sun when it's 90 degrees outside that was not it just you know i was i was reading today actually kind of going back and refreshing my memory about that match and there was sort of some at least low key controversy about the grass on the pitch since we're talking soccer, it's a pitch, yeah. it's not a field. That's and right. Like the ball wasn't rolling fast enough on the pitch that day. So we'll see if they're able to sort of solve that problem since they have to, they imported that grass from New Jersey because of the artificial turf that's on the field. We'll see maybe if uh, they can solve that this time around. I'm yeah, just not into the soccer. So, and it, you know, it is what it is. I would honestly be more interested, like if they brought Wrexham 
in. Have you seen any of the Wrexham series? Yeah, I, FX, you know, I Ryan not, Reynolds, and Rob McElhaney. Yeah, like no, if they I brought to. Wrexham to town, I would be into that. There you because go. Because you've got a couple of celebs attached. Because you might you know? run into them. That's yeah. why you'd want to go. Like Robin, Robin yeah. Ryan might be in the yeah. box right next to me. Like yeah. that, I could, you know, I could I could do something. With I that. get that. So, I totally yeah. get that. Yeah. Compare biceps with Rob McElhaney and you know, <laughs> not that mine would stack up to his. But I mean, you, you got know. time. You got time. He pumps a little iron. Yeah. You got time. You got a couple of months. You know, work on it. That's right. See if we can find the right juice to make it happen. <laughs> but Brent yeah, that to... that or like Ted Lasso, like bring in yeah. a fake soccer team, and that would obviously honestly seriously you know, have Wrexham play Ted Lasso's team. How about that? That would, yeah, be, that would be awesome. Because yeah. I I do believe that the actors. By the way, I did watch the final season uh hmm. finally anyway um and i ha- i can't even remember most of what happened i just didn't was you very, think the last yeah. season was really hit and miss yes like they tried 100%. to do too much with a lot of the sort of was, the, the lower tier characters they tried it was to, very odd yeah. like the, the way it started out with um with the, the the former kit guy, you know, and he's the head coach of the opposition. He's this big, rough, and tough guy, and he ends up back being a kit guy. Like, right? I I don't know. It was just very strange. The whole thing was very strange, and I wasn't anticipating the way that it was going to end. It was very I don't know. Bleh. Tommy Guns has no idea who any of these people are. Okay, so Ted Lasso. No, oh, come on. Played by Jason Sudeikis. If you have Apple TV, just go watch a couple of the first episodes of right. Ted Lasso on Apple. I would just recommend that. He yes. is he is a college football coach. He his character is a college football coach from Wichita State, from Wichita State, and he goes to England to coach a soccer team. He gets yes. hired to coach a soccer team in England and hilarity ensues. Right. First couple seasons were great. Last season, like you said, yeah, it was very well. And the problem was, you know, the first two seasons were so good. I think the expectation of season three had to be through the roof. Yeah. And I, I just don't know how you even live up to that billing. You know what I mean? All right, we're losing people with the soccer. All right, all right. What right. non-college football sporting event would you like to see come to Notre Dame Stadium? See, this was difficult for me because. There's only so many sports that you can play inside of a football stadium. Because the, the my my initial thought was like, you know, shove a baseball game in there, but it's not big enough. There's no way you could field a ba- you know a baseball field inside the football stadium. And so the obvious and you know the the obvious there's obvious choices, right? So like hockey, soccer, like yeah, those are obvious choices. And I had a hard time really coming up like maybe. I don't know why I wouldn't want to watch it. Like a rugby match might be kind of cool to see inside Notre Dame stadium, because that's something that, you know, a lot of people around here probably haven't had a chance to see, um, you know, <laughs> decaf says NASCAR, a uh, <laughs> little small for NASCAR. Okay. <laughs> He's just I mean, joking, so but this still will be the second soccer match. We've had NHL um, yep. hockey, like, what winter classic, winter classic. Yep. I don't think we've had anything else. Sporting, but what else can you put right? in there? Like the NFL, like oh, was non-college football. Like, all right, you're right. It's give right me there. A Dallas Cowboys exhibition game. You know we're it's all right there. there. Yeah, or, you know, like they added. You know they added this 17th game in the NFL. Give me an NFL game at Notre Dame Stadium. That would be yeah, awesome. That's a good call. That's a good call. I, it's sitting right there on a silver platter, and I missed it. Royal Rumble. That's not a bad one. See, I was thinking today because like. You know, NCAA tournament is starting and stuff like that. And like Nebraska, basketball. like, yeah, like Nebraska. Remember they did like volleyball and that kind of stuff yeah. there. Like the only problem with basketball is the, you know, the, the season. seasons are changing yeah. and you don't know what is going to happen. True. This is and it'd true. almost have to be like an exhibition game, you know, like in early October or something like that. But WWE is not a bad idea either. From and only if you could put it into a time machine and go back to like late eighties, early nineties, when it was actually good. But that's a different right. conversation, right? But that's NFL. You know, whether it's an NFL exhibition game or 
you know, they're sending all these NFL games overseas now that they've got their, yeah. you know, they're going to freaking Brazil. That's there was talk that they were gonna, you know, with this 17th game that they added, play NFL games, you know, like at it and in Alabama or Notre Dame or Michigan, that would be cool, wherever it happened to be. Because yeah. college stadiums are bigger than NFL stadiums because right. NFL stadiums are packed with all the luxury suites and all those different things, so it takes out seats. I mean, having an NFL game in like you know, mid. I hate Michigan stadium, right? Over a hundred thousand people like that would be cool. Yeah. That would be cool. I would think DK just for you, like if the lions ever hosted the Cowboys, if you could play that at Michigan stadium, instead of Ford field, I would think that you could sell out Michigan stadium. For I would like think that. so. I would think so. Yeah. I would think that any NFL game that you could bring to a place like Notre Dame, Michigan's, you know, wherever it happens to be, yeah, you would sell that out. I would think so. You know, I'd be there. I I'd go with you. Okay, I'd let you come. Thank you. <laughs> we'll get our RV. You might have to make room for Jesse though, if it was. I know we would. The DCBs fill in the blank. The Bears <laughs> trading Justin Fields to Pittsburgh for a 2025 sixth round draft pick that could turn into a fourth round pick is blank. <sighs> The worst news that I got all weekend. I mean, they got fleeced, first of all. Now, the market obviously wasn't very strong for Justin Fields. I get it. But the fact that the fact that you traded up and did all the different things you did to get him, and all you could get was a six-round pick for him three years later or whatever it's been, is so sad. I don't. I think he's better than that. He's going to go be a backup, I know obviously. you do. He's going to be a backup. the league doesn't. The league does not agree with Vince. And that's so. fine. The league doesn't have to agree with me, obviously, because I don't agree with the moves that the Bears are making right now. Look, they're bolstering up their offense for the first time, it feels like, in forever. And then they get rid of the quarterback. Like, yeah. how must he feel? Like, oh, now you make these offensive moves and then you move me out? Like, they just set him up for failure, in my opinion. And I realize I'm defending Justin Fields. I'm not saying that he's a Pro Bowl caliber quarterback. I'm not saying that. But I am saying he's a mid-level quarterback. He's better than some of the guys that are out there that are going to be starting next year. And you're putting all your eggs in the Caleb Williams basket at this point. And I just think that he's a mental midget. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> but I just I don't I don't trust the off the field version of Caleb Williams. Yeah, I know. It's gonna be I mean that's my issue. It's going to happen. I think you're going to have to come to terms with it at some point I know. because it's going to happen. After this, it's 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 happening now. Tommy says they did Justin Fields dirty, but I mean, apparently from from the reports, you know, if you if you believe the reports, they had some offers from other teams that he didn't necessarily want to go to, and they ended up trading him to Pittsburgh because that's what he wanted. Now, I, I believe that to an extent, but I also believe if the Bears would have straight up you know, gotten an offer of a of a fourth round and definitely a third round pick for Justin Fields, they wouldn't have cared, you know, what Justin Fields wanted because they spent a, obviously a first round draft pick on this guy, what, three years ago? So it just, the guy devalued pretty quickly. And yeah. it's, it's, it's going to be an interesting situation in Pittsburgh. It's going to be an interesting situation in Chicago, you know, like the just the whole like Russell Wilson tweeting, oh, come on, my my guy, Justin Fields or whatever, you know, he's saying like he's excited about that move. Like, how long is it going to take before fans are calling for Justin Fields to be the starter in Pittsburgh? I don't think it might take not too long, long based not on the take long. track record that Russell Wilson has. Yeah, it's not going to take long. That's for sure. So, yeah. I, <sighs> I mean, look, it is what it is. Is I, I said this. I think I said this to Brian when I saw that Fields got traded. The The Bears will now have selected in their last two quarterbacks, guys from two of the three, two of my three most hated teams in college football, Ohio State and USC. Brutal. Just absolutely brutal. Ryan Roberts chiming in. He says Wilson is better than Fields. I do believe that. I do believe that right now, but that's not a really high bar, I don't think, either. You know, like if you just look at stats, 
based on what Russell Wilson did last year. He is better. <sighs> it's going to be a long year. So after being left out of the NCAA men's basketball tournament, St. John's Pittsburgh and Oklahoma have declined invitations to the NIT. Do you buy or sell these teams turning down the NIT invites? It's a huge sell. Are they just butt hurt because they didn't get into the NCAA tournament? Like that, I'm sorry. It's a huge sell. You don't turn that down. Go play. I'm going to take my ball and go home. I'm not going to go to your tournament. Come on, man. Suck it up. That's ridiculous. <laughs> It's well, ridiculous. You're not obligated to play in the NIT. I get right? it. And like, I get like, it. Like John is in here. He said, but I think like Tom Noy, if we had Tom Noy in here, he would buy it as well. Like Tom Noy has always been on the, you know, like, like the, the NIT is like a morgue, <laughs> you know, like when Notre Dame, even, you know, when they played Penn state a few years back in Bonzi Colson's last year hosting those NIT that NIT game man it's just like if you don't want to be there I don't think you should be there and obviously like I don't know you know the specifics with each team just in terms of like who they got who's leaving all these different things but you know like we were talking like if you're Notre Dame and Notre Dame was offered an NIT invitation I think you'd jump on it because oh my like gosh, yes. they would have earned their way just getting an NIT invite that obviously didn't happen. These teams, you know, like the NIT is a consolation prize. And I think that your players, the players have to be invested in it if you're going to get in there. So I don't, I don't have a huge problem with them turning it down. I do find it interesting that three teams all opted to turn it. I down. mean, here's my issue. They're acting like they're better than the NIT tournament, right? You're right. not newsflash. You're clearly not better it's than like, the NIT tournament. Yeah, recent his, especially St. John's and, and Pittsburgh. You know, recent history. It's like you should you, they they realistically probably should be taking anything they can get. <laughs> yeah. The irony was St. John's getting you know squeezed out of the NCAA tournament. There were obviously, uh, you know, a lot of uh, of bid stealers in these conferences. Sure. You know, like the, the yeah, favorites got upset. The irony was St. John's though is. Rick Patino's son, Richard, is the head coach at New Mexico, and they stole a bid by winning <laughs> their tournament. So Sorry. son helped squeeze out dad, you know, when Love all that. was said and done. So it's, there's there's a little bit of hey, irony there with New Mexico know. getting in and St. John's ended up getting squeezed out. I mean, really, Indiana State is the team that most people wanted to see with this cream. Have you heard the, like, the cream oh, Abdul yeah. Jabbar yes. guy, you know, like the white guy with the yep. guy, you know, like – he sounds like he would have been a really fun story to watch in the tournament. Had, and they didn't had get in. Indiana State made it in, but they didn't quite make it. Hey, get to win your conference tournament, man. And yeah. obviously that didn't happen. And so, you know, sorry. And by the way, Porter Mosier down there at Oklahoma, since leaving Loyola, has not been to the tournament, NCAA tournament, since he's yeah, been the head see? coach at Oklahoma for the last Should three years. Should have stayed years. at Loyola. I know. Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. I, I guess it, when, it, when it's all said and done, what it comes down to for me is I'm just a proponent of playing. I, I guess I wouldn't want to pack it up. Like, you're giving me an opportunity to play yeah. for something. I want to play. You know, prove everybody wrong. I something. think of these, you know, like Rick Pitino, because he's Rick Pitino, sort of has his own set of oh, I'm sure. you know, expectations. But remember just a few weeks ago where he was ripping the players, you know, all this different stuff that was going on there at St. John's. Oklahoma, of these three teams... Recent, obviously, St. John's history really goes back to the 1980s where they were, you know, Chris Mullen, you know, like when they were Lou Carnesaca, you know, a respectable program. Pittsburgh's isn't quite as long ago, even though it's probably been, what, maybe 15 years or so since they were, you know, a pretty good, you know, Big East program. But I think Oklahoma's got a little bit longer track record and probably came in with higher expectations than either, either of the other two. So like, I definitely, I, I can forgive Oklahoma a little bit more because again, you know, kind yeah. of like what we were talking about last week, if you came into the season with legitimate NCAA expectations and you don't make the NCAA, I think the NIT even becomes that much more, eh, you know, how, how invested are we really going to be? I get it. it, but I just, 
Because right. you really don't get any juice until you win a couple games in the you NIT. Get to go to New York or and then, wherever. Yeah, you like yeah. you build a little momentum. You get closer to New York and Madison Square Garden and all that kind of stuff. But a lot of the times you're playing some of those games at home. Another opportunity to play in front of your home fans. Like, right. I don't know. I feel like you could spin it in a positive way and have guys want to play. Yeah. But it was fun. The only time it was fun for Notre Dame, I can't remember what year this was. This had to be around. Uh, 03 ish, 04 ish, something like that. Remember when they hosted Purdue in the yep. NIT? The place was packed and there was a lot of atmosphere, obviously, because you had so many local people sure. invested in that. But that was that, that was, was the only good NIT experience I really remember. Yeah, that's Notre fair. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. What what is the third tournament that was out there? Um the uh CBI college. CB, have they done they've done the, the invitations for that yet? Yeah, and I don't yeah, I think it's it's pretty much okay. You know, yeah, yeah, just curious. Didn't run down the list of who got invited, but fair enough. Yeah, my sister, by the way, got Cal Poly to the women's NIT. Nice. And that was you know like when you're talking about accomplishments, they were a program that this is her second year out there. They had like two or three wins the year before she took over, and I think they had they they've got 17 wins right now, and they made the women's. NIT. So for them, you know, again, like that's a step in the right direction. So she's not turning it down. She wants to play some ball. Yeah. Love it. That's right. That's how the Stiers is are. Play some ball, baby. (laughs) That's right. Fill in the blank. It's blank that six days after being fired after 17 years as Long Beach State's head coach, Dan Monson led the 49ers to three wins in three days to win the Big West Tournament and get an automatic NCAA tournament bid. I think it's hilarious. I I think it is hilarious. I mean, he is basically just sticking it to him. Like, hey, you guys wanted to fire me. I'm going to take my team to the tournament for the first time in, what, 12 years, something like that. Like, first of all, I'm shocked that he's he's still coaching after he got fired. That that tells me a lot about who this guy is, first of all. And then the fact that his players... And he decided, like, okay, it's time. Let's go. Time to turn it on. Time to flip the switch. We're going to the NCAA tournament. Good for him, man. I, I just think that's hilarious. And you want to talk about egg on the face of uh, the administration. Well, I know. And, like, as far as I know, he's still out the door. But what happens if he yeah. wins a game or two in the NCAA sure. tournament? <laughs> like Hilarious. He had only been to the NCAA tournament once previously i think it was like 12 years ago and dan monson for people maybe who you know haven't really followed it he's actually the guy who got gonzaga on the map he took him to the tournament and then he parlayed that and this has been like 25 years ago he parlayed that into a job at minnesota didn't really have any luck at minnesota he's been at long beach state ever since but he's the one you know, like prior to to Dan Monson getting Gonzaga into the NCAA tournament, they were like the only thing people really knew about Gonzaga was it was a trivia question. Like I can remember watching when when John Stockton played for the Utah Jazz, the trivia question was what college did you know John Stockton play for? It was Gonzaga, right. and people were Gonzaga. like, "Where the hell's Gonzaga? What's that all about?" Yeah, so right. Dan Monson really got him on the map, getting him to the NCAA tournament. Mark Few has obviously, you know, taken off and more than run with it since taking right. over because he's been there for like again oh, like twenty five years. And he's or had at that multiple opportunities to go yeah. elsewhere, and he's like, "No, I'm good." Yep, but it is crazy that like you part ways and boom, there they go. They get an NCAA turn. I'll be really curious to see, you know, like again if he wins a couple games yeah do they change their mind do they keep him around or I don't know that he'd want to would you want to stay <laughs> I don't know it's it's I, probably you know, I don't know 17 years one previous bid it's probably yeah. time for some fresh blood anyway and maybe he can potentially parlay it into yeah. something better for him this down is the true road. get good a fresh call. start someplace else yeah good call so a curious one here to wrap things up with today Trev Alberts <laughs> recently left Nebraska to become the athletic director at Texas A&M. Is it fair or foul that Texas A&M and Nebraska 
have now been paired up in the first round of both the men's and women's NCAA basketball tournaments. Oh, I think it's super fair. I think it's uh, super awesome, too. That's called karma, and I think it's fantastic. Look, he made the decision to move, and I'm sure that he's feeling good about the move, right? And so I don't think he's going to be in a bad spot, and he gets to hang around a bunch of people that he used to know. So I think it's super fair. I think so as well, and I think it's hilarious. Like, yes, it, it was one, you know, because the men's pairings came out, and people were, it was like, oh, ha ha, that's that's kind of, and then the women's pairings come out, and they've got a matched up, right? Again, it's it's hysterical. So Trev Alberts gets to be around all of his old friends, I guess, yeah. for a couple of different games when he's, you know, when he's wearing his maroon now instead. It's uh, took it's that hysterical. paycheck to go to A and M. Good for him. That's right. Tommy's asking who we think is more likely in a finals matchup, UConn against Kentucky, Houston, or Purdue. This isn't chicken. It's uh, it's PU. Yeah, that's right. Um, I'm guessing Tommy is filling out his bracket for our little contest. Right. So like, do we really want to help Tommy with this? Leg up. <laughs> give you a leg up, Tommy. What do you think this is? That's right. Uh, I haven't even looked at the bracket yet, so I can't really. I need to do a little bit more research, especially since we're going to be competing against people who actually probably have been paying attention to college football. Uh, And so I I can't give anything away, nor can I give a solid choice and back it up at this point. Oh, Tommy, Tommy's saying it's against his two brothers. Okay. If that's gotcha. Yeah. I don't know if DK and salty are your two brothers. Okay. If that's the way you want to spin it. I, (laughs) I, I like Purdue. I just don't know that they have what it takes to win the big one. You know what I mean? I just don't like their guards in the tournament. The tournament is so much about guard play, and that's what's always killed Purdue for the most part. You know? Yeah. Um, What was I going to say? Excuse me. I had a little hiccup there. Remind everybody about the bracket challenge that we're doing and where they can go to find that if they want to participate. Absolutely. So the the group that we set up, IB Nation Sports Talk. So it's IB, New Word Nation, New Word Sports, New Word Talk. So you just go to groups, you search it, ask to join. ESPN. 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 Go to ESPN and search for it. Thank you for the reminder. We're going through ESPN. So don't be upset that we're, you know, using the the mothership. But uh, IB Nation Sports Talk is the group name. Password, Irish, breakdown, all one word, capital I, capital B. Okay, so it's super easy. We've got the two styers and myself. That's three. And then four people have since joined. So we got a total of seven nice. right nice. now. And it's Already an unlimited group. Up. So come on over. And then uh, Sean and I will be back tomorrow. So maybe by then I'll have the women's one set up. And uh, you guys can join that one too. And so we'll have some fun and, you know. Vince is going to take the winner ice fishing. That'll be the prize. <laughs> I can't think of what would be worse. sheet of ice. The ice or the fishing. <laughs> like either one I is not for me. Um, <laughs> because Vince is Mr. Patient. He loves fishing. <laughs> it is, fishing is so boring. Come on. What are these things going to bite? I can't do it. I cannot do fishing. I realize it's I there for the talking and the, the, the frivolity and all that. But whew, I can't do it. I, I cannot do it. My dad used to take me fishing when when I was a kid. And I just... It's just, I, you know, I did it once or twice as I got older yeah. and, you know, ultimately I was like, eh, this just, and I was telling somebody the other day, um, it, it was actually Jesse's girlfriend. They were here this weekend and she said her grandparents used to have like this big fish fry at the end of the summer and all this different stuff. And I'm like, from all the fish that they would catch. Right. And like impressive. the problem, the problem with that is I just never had an appetite for cleaning fish. Like oh yeah, nope. Mm-mm. Cutting them open and taking the guts out, like I just nope. I will eat the fish, but I have no desire to clean the fish. Nope. And so that's kind of where the fishing, I think, really officially ended for me. Yeah, no, that's fair. I just like I, you know, I'm not really a hunter, uh, and you know, for the almost one of the very same reasons, yeah. I don't know that I could clean a deer or whatever you call it. <laughs> you know, where you right field dress a deer i don't know what i don't know what you call it. when they're hanging that. there and you're just like taking uh-huh. an axe at it that's i nope that's just yep. it's just not for me but yeah that's the thing too because you know like dad used to take me pheasant hunting you know or quail hunting when you know in kansas 
when I was, you know, and again, it's uh, it, it's one thing to do that, you know, it's okay, you hang out, the camaraderie, you know, and sure. all that kind of stuff. But it's like, one, it doesn't taste that good, you know, like I'd, I'd rather just go to the store and buy a chicken or a turkey. <laughs> and you know, again, I, the gut thing is a problem for me. So Yeah, yeah, I, I'm with you 100%. Yep. Blood and guts. Couldn't do any of it. All right. Couldn't do any of it. That's one way to end a show. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I called my called your wife when 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 my kid like cut his finger open when right. he was he was my first child. So of course I was freaking out and fingers bleed. I call I was like I don't I, I, I Stacy's a nurse. So I, I called her. She's like fingers bleed, Vince. It's gonna be okay. Like that's me right there in a nutshell. So yep. you know. <laughs> All right. Well, Vince is going to be here with me for the next couple of days. And because of the way the women's tournament broke out, they don't play till Saturday. So we've got shows all week this week. And we've, of course, we've got yes. some practice later this week and, you know, some player and coach availabilities that we'll have on Wednesday. We've got pro day on Thursday. Oh, so that's right. We've got all kinds of stuff that's going to be yeah. coming up this week. Good old pro day. Ooh. Yep. All right, well, hit that like button before you leave. And, of course, subscribe, rate, and review on your podcasts. And we will talk to you tomorrow on IB Nation Sports Talk.